All right, ladies and gentlemen. So t with this screencast, we're going to pick up with um, really kind of like how FDR's first New Deal is received. Uh, and then we're going to kind of go into a little bit of um, his second New Deal, which lasts, you know, in his second term, uh, which is really 1936 to 1938. Um, so first we're going to talk about is not really how it's necessarily received by the people. The people overwhelm, overwhelmingly are pretty happy with FDR and FDR's New Deal. He's resoundingly elected again in 1936. Um, really what we're going to talk about is how the other branches of government receive what FDR does. Because really there's going to be a battle over is this constitutional? This is a huge expansion of government power that we've never seen before. Um, yesterday, when you guys kind of did the activity about criticisms of the New Deal, you see that a lot of people are criticizing it from the right and from the left over, you know, whether it's a, a socialist policy or um, it's not going far enough. Some of the people think it's not helping enough. So really what we're going to focus on today first is what is this battle over the constitutionality of FDR's programs really all about? Um, so the first thing that we're going to take a look at is uh, what are certain programs that come under question? So really the big things here are, um, one, is this expanding the power of the government, the power of the legislative and executive branch too far? Is this taking away like liberties and rights of the people and an expansion of government power? And so essentially the Supreme Court is going to be the one that's going to jump in here and declare a bunch of FDR's programs to be unconstitutional. So the most famous one that gets declared unconstitutional is the AAA, the Agricultural Adjustment Act that we talked about. So this one gets declared unconstitutional by the federal government. Essentially what they, they kind of uh, view this as is um, giving too much power to the federal government to decide with um, limiting production of food. And it's kind of like too much impl implementation into the, the market system and too much implementation or too much involvement in um, business and like agriculture. Um, and so they deem this whole idea to be an unconstitutional act by the federal government. Um, and so like this is one good example of an act that was declared unconstitutional. It's not the only one. There are several acts by um, passed under the first New Deal that are declared unconstitutional by the Supreme Court. Now, FDR really is pretty upset about this whole idea about the Supreme Court kind of like taking away a lot of his programs and and getting rid of them. So the two most famous ones that are declared unconstitutional are the AAA and the NRA on uh, the National Recovery Act. So essentially, um, FDR comes up with an idea. So a lot of the, the Supreme Court justices, they're kind of older. Um, they're much more conservative. Like a lot of FDR's programs are instituting a lot of new liberal ideas. And um, critics of it are going to say it's pushing the country too far to the left, too far to the liberal side. Um, so the Supreme Court is really like your last kind of conservative branch of the government at the time. The legislative branch is kind of in step with Roosevelt. And so the only thing really stopping his programs from being fully implemented is going to be the Supreme Court. So essentially, Roosevelt comes up with an idea that's known as uh, Roosevelt's court packing scandal. Uh, and so essentially what he wants to do is he wants to add new justices to the Supreme Court. So at the time and currently, we have nine justices on the Supreme Court. Uh, now, that number is not fixed by the Constitution. I think a lot of Americans think that nine is the number that is fixed by the Constitution. It's not. Um, originally, we, I think we only had five when we first started the country. Then we had six for a while. And then eventually it got expanded to nine. Uh, so essentially what Roosevelt wants to do is he wants to add six justices to the Supreme Court. Now, why does he want to do it? He wants to be able to appoint six new justices that are in line with his philosophy, his more liberal philosophy, um, so that his New Deal programs do not get declared unconstitutional by the Supreme Court. Uh, and so this is kind of his idea. Now, he needs congressional approval in order to do this. Um, so Congress is not on board with this. Congress is going to say, like, Listen, this is not acceptable. Um, this is giving way too much power to the president. The president is trying to expand his power, his power even further by trying to stop the only branch of government that's really checking his power and checking his power with the New Deal. Um, so Congress never goes along with this. They never pass this idea of expanding the Supreme Court to 15 members. But you want to understand here, I think, which is interesting, is that 
FDR wants to do it. He's trying to do it. He's trying to expand the federal gov the power of the federal government further. Legislative branch won't go along with it. The other important thing is that he tries to do this before his election in 1936, and it has no effect on the outcome of the election. The people still overwhelmingly support Roosevelt, overwhelmingly support his ideas and his philosophy. And so this kind of reinvigorates him and is going to kind of implement uh, the next phase of his program, which we're going to call the Second New Deal. So FDR's Second New Deal um, is going to be able to be implemented because he's so overwhelmingly elected. It kind of, again, adds some um, fuel to his like new program here. So the Second New Deal has a lot of different aspects to it. Um, some of the key ones we're going to kind of take a look at um, you know, a little bit uh, later. Um, but we're just going to look at one major program that's put in place in the Second New Deal, uh, which is a program called the WPA, which stands for the Works Progress Administration. So again, Keep in mind, right, for the second New Deal, just like the first New Deal, there's some programs that are designed for recovery, some that are designed for relief, and some that are designed for reform. So keep in mind, like, what do you think the, the, the WPA is designed for? Um, what's the purpose of it? What's the point of it? And then also, um, we're going to kind of go through, I think it's good to have some examples of some of these projects that they built with the WPA uh, funding and money. So um, usually in class, what we do is we kind of like, try and guess what famous New York City landmark it is. So we'll kind of do it through the screencast. Um, so I'll pause on each landmark. You can, I will pause the video each time I put a new picture up. I'm not really gonna pause too long on each picture, um, but you pause the video each time I put a new picture up and see if you can guess like what famous New York City landmark is this? Cause they were all built using the WPA program. You may not realize that because a lot of them don't have markers for the WPA. You might not kind of know that. Um, but the WPA is very similar to the PWA, right? The Public Works Administration. What they did was they built massive public works projects all throughout the entire country. Uh, and so essentially uh, you have, uh, these are good examples of them, kind of what they built and kind of things that they did, not just in New York City, but throughout the entire country in big cities and more rural areas all over the place. Okay, so um, here's our first one. So again, I'm not going to pause for too long. So each time I throw a new picture up there, why don't you pause your video, see if you can guess along, see if you know what famous New York City landmark this is. Um, and then we'll kind of like uh, see if you, if you guess correctly. Uh, so this is, of course, a bridge in New York City. Uh, it's the Triborough Bridge, which connects uh, Queens to Manhattan and to the Bronx. Um, so it was built using uh, WPA funding and um, built mostly, obviously, by New Yorkers who are uh, working for the WPA. All right, next one. Um, so this one, I'll give you guys a hint. This one is located in Queens. Uh, so that's LaGuardia Airport, which is currently undergoing a major revision right now, like a major overhaul. So one of the things I hope that they keep is the WPA mural that's in LaGuardia Airport, because if you ever go in there, take a look for it. They do have a mural to the WPA because it was built um, using WPA funding and money. All right, next one. So I'm gonna give you guys a hint. This is in Manhattan. I'll try and give you the borough, and maybe narrow it down for you. This is in Manhattan. Uh, and if you guessed, it was the East River Drive, also known as the FDR Drive. You guessed correctly. So this is, I guess, again, named after um, President, President Roosevelt. Um, it runs right along the East River. So it's a major highway that runs through Manhattan. This is them uh, constructing the river. All right, this one is also in Manhattan. Um, you've probably, you may have been there before. Uh, it's pretty famous. So uh, this is called the South Street Seaport, also known as the New York Docks. Um, so you may have been down there. A lot of shipping kind of takes place down there. And they also have a lot of different like um, stores down there now. They kind of made it more of like a tourist kind of uh, destination. All right. This one uh, is located in... Hmm, this one is located in Manhattan, but it, it, it goes to another state as well. So that kind of gives you a little bit of a hint. Um, and this is the Lincoln Tunnel, uh, which connects Manhattan to New Jersey. Uh, and so this is them kind of constructing the Lincoln Tunnel, which is a massive feat of engineering, especially given the time period. Okay, next one. So this one is in Queens. Um, this is not the best picture of it. Um, you may be able to figure it out from the picture. 
Um, this one's a little bit better. It's like a recreation of it. Um, so it's actually Reese Park down in uh, by the Rockaways, and and you know some some of you guys might have gone to the beach down there. Uh, so so they're not only building like infrastructure like bridges and roads and tunnels, but they're also building parks. Um, Inwood Park in Manhattan is built um, by the WPA. You have Van Cortlandt Park up in the Bronx is built by the WPA. Um, again in Queens, uh, another recreation center. Uh, which is Astoria Swimming Pool, is built by the WPA. So you have a lot of these different programs all throughout the cities and a lot of these different projects all throughout the city. Um, this one is in Manhattan, so you may have visited it. Um, this is the Central Park Zoo, again, a WPA project. Originally it was free. A lot of these things were free. So they're, they're designed to like put infrastructure into the city, infrastructure into the, the society, um, but also to kind of like provide some like entertainment for people, something to do, because um, the depression, it, you know, it's a tough time period. Okay, so we're going to stop there. I'm going to add on to this and kind of do like a short video on some of the other um, Second New Deal programs so you have a little bit better idea. We're going to stop the screencast for there, though. Uh, we're going to stop the screencast at, at this point. I'm going to just look for that second screencast. I'll probably post it along with this one.